So these are a couple of things where I have proof in the pudding that stepping back and being whole really improves your business. And that's why you always hear me talking about time, energy, and confidence management, because you are the number one most valuable asset of your business. Introducing The Vixen Voice, a podcast for ambitious women entrepreneurs ready to move into their feminine essence, live their truth, and unlock their full potential. I'm your host, April Roberts, and each week I'll be interviewing inspiring women who decided to take a leap of faith to pursue their dream. Women who believe that they were born for something bigger. Welcome, everyone, to a new episode of The Vixen Voice, and we are going to kind of dive in today. So here's what's interesting. I'm super curious about everyone's schedules. When you take time off and when you take that time to rest and reset, because here's what I found with a lot of my clients is they're not really taking enough time to rest and reset. So I know a few of you are here in the audience. So what I'd love to hear is drop in the comments if you're here with me. Do you take off time to rest and reset? And if you do, is this formulated time? Do you have a schedule for it? Or is it just kind of haphazard when you can? And what I'm doing is pulling up, you know, I did a, I did a, in our Facebook group, a little poll and do you work during the weekend was my question. So 50% of you said yes, 50% of you said sometimes, none of you said no. So if you're in the chat and you actually take weekends off, please let me know. I'd love to hear that. And if you're listening to this or watching us on YouTube for the Vixen Voice, I'd love to hear below. Do you always work weekends? Do you sometimes work weekends? Or do you never work weekends? So I'm getting not enough and lots of comments. So here's my question. Now, I totally get it. Like, I know in the restaurant industry, that's why everything's closed Monday, because obviously you have to work weekends, right? So I'd love to hear from you. Are you working weekends because of the industry you're in? Are you working weekends because you feel that you don't have enough time during the week? I'm super curious. So Jennifer sharing, I do not take time off time unless it's the last minute. She, jump on a flight and go. Then I'm more tired upon return. Yes. And airports are challenging these days. That's a whole other topic. We'll talk about your travel hacks. I would love to talk about that one time. Because I started taking free days on my travel days because it was so stressful, challenging. And then when I would find myself in the club trying to hop on a Zoom or a meeting, it was just adding to my stress. So I travel a lot. And so on days that I'm traveling, when I can, I take that as a free day where, you know, I might do some things on the plane if I choose to. But like I make sure I don't have scheduled meetings. I don't think have things on the calendar that I have to do because I found that that just added to my stress. And then what's really cool is I prefer not to work on planes because when I was a lawyer, I always had to work on planes. So I try to take that time off as well. But sometimes I will strategically plan work for the plane because I know it'll make my life easier the rest of the time. So Beck says I take weekends off usually. And Christina said my goal is to never work weekends, but with a primary job and business I'm trying to grow, I haven't taken many weekends totally off. Yeah, and I'd love to challenge you and ask like how much control of your calendar you have, because I know a lot of you are still working corporate jobs. You have a lot of responsibility and you're working on building your business so that hopefully you can leave that corporate job or do something that you're incredibly passionate about. So I get that. But pursuing the side business doesn't feel like work. Love that. So I'll share with you what I did because, you know, I kind of started working on the Vixen Gathering in 2020. What a crazy time, right? Now, keep in mind, I was running a financial planning practice. So I was CEO of that company. I was the head financial planner. I was the face for marketing. We have a TV show and then suddenly had to figure out how to do TV when there were no studios, right? 
So lots of balls in the air. I suddenly had a remote team for the first time. And, you, you know, you guys remember 2020 was a challenge, right? So it was crazy that my final calling to start something different came April of 2020. And I was just like, really? Right now? And, you know, luckily I had had a business coach kind of early in my career. I'd say like 2014, I started in 2008. And she really taught me, okay, hey, Mondays, you're going to meet with the team. You're going to prep for the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you meet with clients and prospective clients. And then Friday is catch up. And so for a very long time, I've been running my schedule very streamlined like that. Now, those days were crazy. I would wake up super early on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to review for the day. And when I started doing that, I realized that my brain was mush past 4.30 or a certain time. And so I started having 2.30 be my last appointment because I would do hour and a half appointments. So then we finished at 4, I could wrap stuff up and be done for the day, right? So a lot of times we're scared to make changes like that. But I'm going to share this with you. So at first we cut out evening appointments in our financial planning practice because, uh, you know, people tell you, oh, I can't come during the day. I'm still working. I'm trying to retire. All these excuses. Well, we did an analysis and we closed a very small percentage of the people that came in the evening. So here we were a few nights of the week, staying in the office to meet with them. And of course, if we would have come in on Saturday, they would have met with us then. But I always had a hard no on that for my team and I. We did do special events on the weekend, but we did not meet with clients um, because our jobs were very stressful. We, we had to reset. We had to have time with our family. But when we researched the amount of new clients and business coming from those evening appointments, it was nominal. And here's what I found. The moment I said, no, 4.30 is our last appointment, because again, that would end at 6. The other advisors would take that. Guess what? People could suddenly leave work a little bit early and come see us. I mean, think about your dentist office. They're not there at 7 o'clock at night. Some of them may be, but in general, they're not there at 7 o'clock at night, so you can come after work. They're not there on the weekends, right? And I bring this up because this is an increasing problem in today's world. We're available via DM. We're available via text. We're available via email. We're available via the phone. We're available via social media. And so the challenge I want to give you is if you don't really think this through and set boundaries for yourself, your team, your business, and your family, you are, number one, your sanity is going to start slipping, I promise. Number two, you're going to become less productive because you're burning the candle all the time. And number three, you're not going to be living a very good life. So who's with me? Who wants more joy, more productivity, more income? It actually is amazing that when you do this analysis and figure out how to schedule your time effectively, because probably 20% of what you do makes up 80% of your revenue, right? So let's prioritize those 20% of things we do. Let's hire people for other things or just get rid of them. So I'm going to read a couple of comments here. I love it when we do lives and I love it when we do that as a podcast because you get real feedback from people just like you, the women in here own their business or they they work and they have a side business. And so I'm going to tell you, if you're listening on the Vixen Voice and you haven't joined Abundant Business Women, please go join it because then you can be part of the audience for these lives as well. And let us know if you want us to extend the audience, we can go to YouTube with this as well. So let's see what we're getting here. But pursuing, I usually never work on planes now either anymore. I did for a long time. And now I just use that time to relax and enjoy a new movie or a podcast or a fun audible. Me too. I mean, uh, what I was doing for a long time was listening to the, well, I always listen to the rosary as the lane's taking off because I try to do that daily. So that's my time and it relaxes me. And then I, for a long time, was listening to the Vixen voice because we have such amazing guests. But when I'm interviewing, you know, I'm very present in the moment. So a lot of times I forget all of the wisdom they share. So I like to actually, I know, this is the confession. I listen to my own podcast on the plane, but because I want to hear these amazing guests and I want to hear those tidbits and learn them again. So I love it. So Christina. All right. Christina says me. Hands up. Oh, yes. More joy, more money, more productivity. I'm with you. Beck says it's so true. I'm dealing with some effects of burnout right now. 
And I think it's because I didn't take proper time off. Your body will take over if you mistreat it. It's so true. I was just chatting with someone this morning and she's young and healthy and she is an admitted workaholic. And she couldn't walk a few weeks ago because her adrenal system is so on overdrive from being on all the time. And unfortunately, I think we're going to see this more and more in current society because I, I want to test you. It's interesting because last week I took time off. It was 4th of July and I was with my family. I wanted to be present. And then I drove back to Nashville from Houston, which I actually really enjoyed because talk about being disconnected when you have a 12 hour drive, right? I just got to listen to books, listen to music, enjoy the beautiful countryside. And it's actually one of my new favorite things. But, you know, I wasn't on social much. And here's the thing. I get most of my prospective new clients through DMing on social media, right? So the week of my birthday, when I wasn't doing that, you know, the next week, I didn't have any prospective client calls. Like, I didn't have any sales calls on the calendar. So I was like, okay, got to get back on track. And then it kept it full. Here's what's fun. Last week, and the actually, it's been two weeks since 4th of July. It was 4th of July. And last week, I was barely posting on social. Now our podcast episodes go up. My calendar is flat full of people interested in the Vixen Founders Collective that we launched. So we have this belief, and honestly, I posted two quote cards last week, and I boosted them for 20 bucks each for two days, and we got like 100 plus likes. It was crazy, the new people that followed us. Like everyone tells you, you have to do video, you have to do this. So I'm just sharing these things because I want you to think what feels really true to you, right? So bottom line is I am absolutely booked the rest of this month. I had to add more time to talk to potential new clients because a lot of members of my collective want me to talk to their friends. So I literally had to add more time to my calendar. Nice problem. I still have a hard stop at the end of the day because I wake up at 4 a.m. So if I talk to your friend at 6 p.m., like they're not getting the best of me, right? But even though I wasn't posting every day, and I apologize, you guys see, I haven't been an abundant business woman very much, but I mean, things have just been crazy and I needed that break for my sanity. So, and what's really cool is when you come back, there's everybody and they're excited you're back. So I just, I share these things because I want to encourage you to think, what is something that maybe I could take my foot off the gas pedal for a little bit and give myself a break. <laughs> Beck says she listens to the Vixen voice on planes too. Awesome. <laughs> I've been thinking about posting less and boosting too. Haven't tried it in a while. Yeah, I have my like set audience that I'll boost to every once in a while. I usually used to do it just once a week, but now I'm doing it a little bit more. Christina, need to research how to do the boosting. Ah, next Vixen Founders Collective, I'll show you real quickly. So anyway, just a couple of hacks. And I think it's important we talk about the real deal because, you know, I was listening to someone and they were like, yeah, if something takes, I, it was my buddy, John Cheplack. And he said, you know, I'll paste something. If it gets a little bit behind it, I'll boost it. I, I think it was him, but it was someone I was shocked because they have a ton of organic content, right? And so we're always beating ourselves up of, oh, why is that mind taking off that way? Look, a lot of the big names out there that you see put big money behind that, right? So we want to be careful about comparing ourselves to others because you don't really know what's going on in the background. So anyway, DM me. I'm happy to help you with that. And Christina, when we're on our next collective call, we can chat about it. So... I really just want to encourage you to think and look, when I cut out evening appointments in my financial planning company, we had already been at seven figures. And then what we did in April of 2020, because I started the Vixen gathering, I cut my hours even more. I only worked Monday through Thursday at the financial firm because I took Friday to start thinking about the Vixen gathering, which wasn't even called that then. I didn't know what it would be, but I was like, I need a day for thinking. I need a day for planning my new business, keeping my current business on track and really doing. And from April of 2020 to January 2021 in the financial business, we doubled our recurring revenue in less than a year because I knew that was important for stability for my team and me. And it gave me peace of mind. Right. So I started working less and we made more because 
when I was there, I was freaking on and we were blowing and going. And then I took that time to actually think about the business and think about how to show up as a better leader, how to show up as a better financial planner, how to show up better as the face of the company and also resting and relaxing. And one other thing I did is when I would give dinner seminars when it was non-COVID time, right? 70% of our new revenue came from our dinner seminars. So I would take the entire day off. I used to work a whole freaking day and then go give a seminar. So research has shown that speaking for one hour takes the same amount of energy as an eight hour work day, right? So that was like a 16 hour day to my body. And then I had a lot of friends who had speaking careers and they were like, some of them were like, yeah, I'm in bed the day after a keynote I give. And so I started giving myself permission to rest and recover, giving myself permission to reserve energy to show up at my best. And so what I did was I started taking the whole day off. I'd go for a walk, I'd go for a massage, maybe I'd play with some things in the business, but I was not scheduled at all that day. And when I showed up, I had more energy. Our appointment setting ratio went up. You know, I was 100% present. I would answer a few questions and then I'd walk out and have dinner with my boyfriend. Like I didn't even stick around. I let my team handle it, right? And actually our numbers went up. So these are a couple of things where I have proof in the pudding that stepping back and being whole really improves your business. And that's why you always hear me talking about time, energy, and confidence management, because you are the number one most valuable asset of your business. Awesome. So I'm going to check in on comments here. A day for thinking. I love that. I do find I need time to get into a creative flow. Yep. And I do that on Fridays too. Look, only thing I schedule on Fridays is this live because, and you know, today my niece is in town visiting. So after this, I'm, I'm taking off and we're going to go have fun because I don't get to see her that often. So a day for thinking. I love that. I do find I need time to get into a creative flow. Doesn't work well with the grind mentality. No, it's two different energies. So creative is your feminine energy. The grind is your masculine energy. So you want to know when to toggle between these two energies as well. So Beck says, definitely does not. I feel that too. Beck says, oh, wow. I never realized that about speaking energy. Yeah. And so, you know, Bex, I know you do consultations before clients do their photo shoots. And just remember, that's taking a different energy from you, right? We have to know our unique genius. And in our unique genius, we should be in flow state. So it's going to take less energy from us, but all the other things we have to do are going to take more. So that's why if you do something that's your unique ability. So for example, yesterday I recorded the Vixen voice all day. Nothing else was on my calendar, right? <laughs> Actually, I had a massage and a facial afterward, but like nothing else. I mean, my day starts at like 6 a.m. those days and I want to get as many episodes done as possible. And I'm able to do that because I don't do anything else that day. I just got to focus on getting, you know, getting hair and makeup, feeding myself, which now I do protein shakes and one small meal. So that's more efficient, right? And changing and then taking a breath and getting focused on my next guest or my next topic. And that really takes the full day. And so Bex is on here and she's a client and we rearranged her calendar for the summertime because she wanted to spend more time with her kids because they're getting older, right? You only get 17 summers with your kids. And we were able to restructure where her money-making activity, she could do three days of the month and it would bring in as much revenue as when she was spreading it out over six days. Now she works more than that, but she's a photographer and that's when she's doing her shoots, right? So, and then I found out she was doing admin work before she went to do the photo shoot. So Bex, I hope you don't mind that I'm sharing, but I know you tend to be an open book. And when I was like, why in the world are you checking emails before a photo shoot? She goes, you mean I don't have to do that? And I'm like, no, like, this is your unique form of genius. This is what you do best and only you can do for the company. And it's what you love. So why would you do anything else that day, right? Other than have breakfast with your family, work out, whatever gets you in the zone for your highest value work. Because if you show up and do your best work at that photo shoot, guess what? That client loves you. They're sending you more clients. They're coming back to you. All these great things happen. But if you show up and you're half there, 
they might be like, oh, okay, this is great. I have pretty photos, but, you know, awesome. See you in a couple of years. So just always be thinking about your unique value and how you show up 150, 200%, even if, like, you need to go, like, just take off when it's done, right? So, like, I was cramming in work into every nook and cranny. Yeah, and she said, you know, I don't mind. That's what I love. If you know Beck, she's she's an amazing person, and I'm honored she's been a client of mine for a year and a half now. So, in fact, can't wait to see you in Belize in a couple of days. So, Christina's giving me a mind blown. So, Christina, tell us what you're thinking there. And by the way, if you're here live with me in the audience, here's the great part. You can ask whatever questions you want. So, you know, I kind of went into what I call case studies, like situations where I know that shifting to rest and recover really helped. But I do kind of want to give you a couple of tips. First of all, I'd also love to shift your mentality, right? So I always like to think about professional athletes, because if you think about what professional athletes do, like it's really amazing the limits to which they push their mind, their emotions, and their bodies, right? And, and, and there are other examples of this as well, but for some reason, I always think about this. And professional athletes know they get paid to rest, right? So they're going to give it all they can during the game, and then they're resting and recovering. Also, the best ones know that it's really important who sur you're surrounded with, right? They're very careful what they do and who they interact with before the big game. So that's a big tip tip to take away. Another thing they do is rituals. They do rituals to get in the zone, right? We're going to use some bro code here. As women, I like to say we're going into flow or we're surrendering or we're stepping into our feminine energy. But, you know, I mean, it just happened to me. I just, I, I feel softer. It's so funny. Like when you get good at it, you can call it in like that. So, you know, they know the importance of their ritual to get them in the zone. And I really want y'all to start thinking that way. When I have a day that I'm taking photos or I'm speaking or I'm helping a client, whatever your unique value add is that only you can do your unique area of genius, what is your ritual that gets you in the mode, right? And then if you think about it, really, that's what a morning routine is. It's your ritual to prepare you for the day. So if you need to be creative, what softens you? What gets you back into your body, right? What, what gets you grounded so that you can really be flowing when you go into creative mode? And by the way, as entrepreneurs, we create all the time. When we problem solve, it's creative. When we structure our team, it's creative, right? So creative doesn't have to be that I'm painting this painting behind me. There's lots of times we need our creative energy. And so we really want to honor and hone that. So we talked about how professional athletes know they get paid to rest. They are careful who they surround themselves with. They have rituals. And here's the other cool thing. They all have coaches. Think about it. <laughs> Why did Tiger Woods have a coach? Because the number one golfer in the world makes 10 times more than the number 10 golfer. Do you hear me? They're minuscule points separating number one from number 10. And number one still knows she needs a coach so that we make those different those point differentials, right? So you might be amazing at what you do. You might be killing it in your business. But if you bring in someone you trust who's not emotionally attached like you are, they can see things you can't see. And that's the value of having a coach or a consultant. So again, know that you get paid to rest. Surround yourself with the right people that are going to keep you on track and celebrate your successes. That's critical. Number three, make sure you have a good ritual. And number four, find a coach, a mentor, or a consultant who can help you get there, right? So I'm going to read a couple of comments. Christina says, it never occurred to me to fashion an entire day to support the genius buying my business. Yes. And because it gives you freedom, right? We're constantly, I got to check social. Uh, what's next on my calendar? I got to do this. I got to check this. How, how can you really tap deeply into truth? when you're getting pulled in all these directions. I love the thought of nurturing myself and my genius to show up fully for my clients. Like Bex, I'm a recovering grind mentality perfectionist. 
Yes. And many of us are. That's why, you know, I focus on women and, you know, we're in our 30s, 40s, 50s and we are, and 60s. And, you know, we're kind of resetting ourselves from how we were raised, how we were socialized, what we were taught to do. Right. So this is actually a pretty normal situation. Beck says, I'm so done with the grind. I hear you, my friend. I had to turn off my notifications. I just could not check them. I can't believe you have them. I've never had notifications. But let me tell you a secret. I've never had email on my phone since 2012. People think I'm crazy, but when they're like, oh, I'll just email you, like, you know, tickets to get into events and stuff, like, I have to, like, take a picture, text it to myself because I refuse to put email on my phone. There's just no way. Awesome. So I'd love for you all to share your tips on how to rest and repair. But here's my number one tip. If you don't have a color for joy on your calendar, I want you to create it now. So first of all, if your calendar is not color coded, we need to talk. Let's get it color coded and let's color block it, right? Number two, if you don't have joy on your calendar, I mean, a great way to rest and reset is to experience pure joy. Now, if you're an introvert, that might be snuggled up on the sofa reading a book. If you're an extrovert like me, I can't wait to go have lunch and a margarita with my niece. And by the way, she's 25, not seven. And then bop around my neighborhood, hopping into shops. Like that's going to rest and repair me so much better than if I slept all afternoon. Now, don't get me wrong. Sundays, I try not to get out of my PJs unless I'm going to church. So I still have the rest and recovery days, but know yourself and know what fills you back up, right? So rest and recovery doesn't necessarily mean sleep. We all know when we're having that great time in our life and we're just loving life, and we can get by with less sleep, right? I'm a huge proponent of sleep. I'm not saying don't sleep. I'm just saying you can look for clues as to what truly restores you and helps you rest. Awesome. So let me check what we have. I check it now only at scheduled times. Love it. So one thing I do, a third tip is I have power hour in the morning and power down at the end of the day. And that's when I check email check DMs, check my Slack channel, you know, check project management, make sure I had my tasks planned out for the day or that they're completed, like what my schedule looks like for the day. And that way you don't have to constantly do it throughout the day, right? And your business may be different. Maybe email's really important or you have to answer those DMs. So, so now that I chat with people via DM about business, I'll do that at lunchtime as well, right? or when I'm somewhere waiting for something, but just kind of schedule it in so you have set times because that way when you're spending time with your kids, when you're doing your unique genius, when you're thinking about your business, you don't have all these open tabs in your brain. Oh, did I get that email? Oh, is so-and-so doing this? Because you scheduled in every day to make sure the train is on the track. So I know we got a little off topic today, but as you all know too, I'm a huge proponent of travel. So even if you're just taking a road trip, like a little bit away, like get out of your normal environment, get away. Because especially with us working from home now, when you're at home, you still think of all these things you should do. Oh, I should take care of this project here. Oh, the yard needs some attention. Oh, there's laundry. Oh, you know what? Let me just hop on my computer quickly. So really, even if you just took a day trip with the family and drove somewhere or planned an outside activity, like it's going to get you in a new environment and it's amazing how restorative that is. So I hope y'all enjoyed today. If you don't mind, drop in the comments, what was your biggest takeaway or what did you love about our time here today? Also, feel free to drop. What would you like to hear about next? What What's something maybe you're struggling with? or that you'd like some tips on. And if it's not in my zone of expertise, I will bring a guest coach on and we'll chat about it. So I'm gonna kinda wrap up here, because as I said, I do have plans this afternoon. I'd love to hear from all of y'all. What fills your tank? What really gets you back up and going? And, you know, I was kind of joking about not napping, but honestly, I love a good nap. So <laughs> I, I'm a fan of napping as well. I just know that that doesn't necessarily fill my cup, like being around people I love. Loved it. My biggest takeaway is that it's nice that I'm not alone in my struggle with rest and relaxation. 
No, Bex, this is on the rise. And I wanted to talk about this because I'm hearing more and more people that are having physical ailments due to this. And you all know that I'm very driven by helping everyone avoid what I call two by four moments. And when your health crashes, that's one of those two by four moments, right? So let's be proactive. Let's treat our bodies like the temple that they are. Let's treat our brains, our souls, and our emotions the same way. Like we deserve to be taken care of. And when we take care of ourselves, it's when we show up better for everyone around us and really following our purpose here on earth. So thank you, everyone. And as I always say, the world needs more love and you need more love. So give it to yourself and think about how you're going to show up more in love today. Christina says, so good. Love the idea that we can nurture ourselves on the money making days instead of constantly working. Yes, it's a key hack. I guarantee you, if you look at any professional speaker, any professional athlete, an entertainer, like they have a ritual to take care of themselves so they can show up on go time. So I love that. Take it. Uh, love. The Body Keep Score is a great book underscoring this point. Awesome. And we'll drop that in the resources. Thank you, Christina, for that. So everyone, thank you. Remember, give yourself love. Give those around you love. And here's a challenge for you. Give love to strangers too. The world needs it right now. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Have a good one. Thanks again for listening to the podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to hit subscribe so future episodes are automatically downloaded directly to your device. And if you want access to today's show notes, including links to all the resources we mentioned, visit vixengathering.com slash podcast. Thanks again for listening, and I'll catch you next week for another episode of The Vixen Voice.